Okay, L.L. Bean, how is everybody? I hope you are all well, I hope you are all warm, I hope you are all safe. My name is Philip Karsha, I am a hiker, I am a runner, I am a peak bagger, uh, originally from central Massachusetts. I grew up in the city of Worcester and now super lucky to say that I am uh, living and working in the White Mountains, specifically uh, at the Notch Hostel in the little town of North Woodstock. Going to jump right into it. I am here to speak with you all about a year in my life, a period of 319 days to be exact, um, that I can only describe using one word, um, and that word is wild. Um, this is a year where I hiked close to 2,800 miles in the White Mountains National Forest. Uh, this is a year that I climbed almost a million feet of vertical in the White Mountain National Forest. And this was a year where I really spent um, a lot of my free time, the majority of my free time, slowly chipping away at what I consider to be, still consider to be, um, one of the biggest, one of the boldest, one of the most grueling, uh, and certainly one of the most obscure peak bagging, uh, peak bagging projects, not only in New England, um, but in the United States. And that is the single year grid, you know, this act of, of hiking all 48, 4,000 footers in the White Mountains start to finish every month for 12 consecutive months. So what I wanna to do tonight is I wanna start with a little bit of an opening video, a little bit of a highlight reel, uh, some of the best footage that I took uh, during the single year grid. I'm gonna give you all a little bit of a, a background on who I am, um, how I got to a point uh, where I actually wanted to take on a project like this. And then I'm gonna spend the remainder of the time uh, just kind of highlighting my experiences as I went through you know, month by month, season by season, uh, climbing all 48, 4,000 footers in, in the White Mountains start to finish again for, for 12 consecutive months. So thank you all so much for the invitation to come and speak and for joining. Um, let's get into it, single year grid, let's go. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream. And you would naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure. But now let's, um, let's have a surprise. Let's have a dream which isn't under control. Monday morning. A little bit of a late start today, just breaking tree line on the old bridle path. Gonna hit Franconia Ridge today and then see if we can get something else for the afternoon. Let's go. I got news for you guys. Winter ain't coming. Winter is here. October 13th, top of Kerrigan. No grit, no grid. Big snow, big mood. Let's go. Let's have a dream which isn't under control. Well, something is going to happen to me that I don't know what it's going to be. And then you would get more and more adventurous. And you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. So hopefully by looking at some of that video footage, you can start to understand why I would describe this experience uh, using uh, the word wild, because even looking back at, at that footage now, a, a couple years removed from the project, it, it absolutely still strikes me um, as being wild. So I'll start this thing by saying uh, for the first 16 years of my life, um, I was a reasonably normal human being or what I would describe as a reasonably normal human being. What happened at age 16? I climbed this mountain. This is Mount Wachusett, small little 2000 foot peak in central Massachusetts. Um, a family friend ended up taking me to the summit on a summer afternoon. And it was a, a completely 
uh, for formidable experience for me, you know, looking, looking out at the city of Worcester, the city I grew up in, getting that perspective, looking out to the Berkshires, getting that perspective, looking up to the White Mountains, didn't know what I was looking at, but kind of getting that fresh perspective, climbing, you know, climbing a mountain uh, for the first time and being the very curious human being that I was, I remember, um, you know, being 16, going back home, getting on the internet, which at that time was like a AOL dial up and just getting on Google and, and just immediately searching, like, what are the biggest mountains in Massachusetts? What are the biggest mountains in New England? And, you know, that's when I first started seeing words like Berkshires and Green Mountains and, um, you know, something that came up in a very, very consistent manner while I was doing these searches um, was, was these mountains right here. And, and these are the White Mountains of New Hampshire. And, you know, these, these piqued my curiosity even more. The, these, you know, these mountains look very different from Wachusett and I immediately wanted to go up there. And uh, I ended up spending a good portion of my late teens and early twenties kind of tramping around uh, the White Mountains of New Hampshire spent, you know, spending nights out uh, making all of those uh, those typical mistakes that you start to that you start to make when you're, you know, first first, um, you know, going out and, and really spending time in the mountains. And, you know, again, this was the first place that I that I started to spend the night out. This is the first time that I, you know, did a five mile day, a 10 mile day. Um, this was the first time that I saw an Appalachian Trail through hiker, you know, walking from, from Maine to Georgia. Again, it was a super, super um, important and, and, and uh, for, you know, formidable time in my life where I was just absorbing so many things and, and really learning, um, learning from what I was absorbing. And it kind of kicked off this period in my life, this, this eight year period that, that I see as um, kind of, kind of, uh, fueled by this sense of infectious repetition. Uh, during this eight years, I was I was able to you know go out and 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 hike end to end some of the longest and some of the most iconic long distance trails um, in the country. And 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 this is effectively like what I lived for, right? Like um, in the late fall and winter and early spring, I I work as much as I could, save as much money as I could. And then in the late spring or early summer, I'd go out and I through hiked and I was able to take off, you know, again, trails like the Appalachian Trail, the Long Trail in Vermont, the Colorado Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail. Um, and, and again, this was just what I was living for. It became so much of a, of a lifestyle that, um, you know, one year of adventures fuel the next and then that year of adventures would uh, kind of fuel the next. And, and it was, again, this infectious repetition, this almost unbreakable cycle. Um, but, but in 2014, something did break it, um, something quite serious, uh, something um, you know, that, 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 you know, I think has a profound effect on, on a lot of people when, when, um, when it happens for them personally. And that is, I, you know, I lost, um, somebody that I would consider to be the, the cornerstone of, of my family. Um, I ended up losing my father, Philip Anthony Karsha, to a very aggressive, very unexpected battle with lung cancer. Um, when I say, uh, aggressive and unexpected, I mean it, um, in, uh, June of 2014 on his 63rd birthday, he was doing, you know, pull-ups in his backyard, kind of, you know, showing off to his kids. And in, in September of that same year, he was dead. And um, I think something very interesting happens when we lose a loved one, when we lose somebody that we are very close to, you know, a lot of times we take a step back, we look at our lives and we start making all these changes. We start identifying the things that we don't like. Losing my father wasn't necessarily like that. You know, that experience, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't necessarily life-changing. It was more life-affirming because in the years leading up to his death, you know, I had really spent a good portion of my youth going out, living directly from my heart, taking on these challenges, taking on these trails, really kind of like seizing, seizing the day for, for lack of a better description. Um, and so again, when my father died and I, you know, was taking that whole experience in, you know, watching someone succumb to cancer over the course of many months, um, I took a step back and I was like, you know what, I don't really want to change. I, I don't really want to change anything. I want to, um, I actually want to continue down the path um, that I'm already on. And I felt very, you know, very confident about that. I wasn't sure where I was going, um, but I very, I felt very confident that that was the direction that I wanted to go. And so the following summer, this is now June of 2015, um, I come up to the White Mountains in kind of a self-described wilderness therapy, trying to still process my father's death and, and figure out like what the next step is for me and my relationship with the outdoors. And I end up climbing all 48, 4,000 footers um, over the course of three weeks, living out of the back of my truck, uh, 
very leisurely um, or what I kind of considered to be leisurely at the time, leisurely pace, just kind of hiking one or two peaks every day, going back to my car and, and, and camping out. And um, even though I had been coming to the White Mountains for many, many years at that point, this was the first time that I climbed all 48, 4,000 footers. I'd always kind of gravitated to, um, you know, the more iconic spots, Cr Franconia Ridge, uh, the Presidential Range. I had never really spread my wings too much. Um, and so this, you know, inevitably going up and, and hiking, you know, the 48 and, um, and climbing all of them in 23 days, you know, this was the first time that I was really sort of exploring a lot of my endurance in the White Mountains. This was the first time that I ever started thinking about uh, the White Mountains grid, you know, which is this, this very, very um, sort of special group of people who have climbed all 48, uh, 4,000 footers in, in every month, um, every month of the year. Uh, this is a, a group of um, under 100 finishers. Actually, now I, I, I believe that there are, are just about 100, if, if not one or two over uh, 100 people who have finished the grid. And again, you know, these people are, are hiking all 48, 4,000 footers in 12 months of the year. Um, you know, 576 peaks in order to complete this list, in order to complete this journey. Now, of course, people are doing this over the course of many, many years of, of their life, because like I said, uh, you're going to amass, you know, close to 3,000 miles, you're going to amass over a million feet of vertical. It takes a lot of time, especially considering um, the fact that, um, you know, you have to go through the winter, you have to go through the, the worst of the conditions. And so I walked away from that experience um, kind, kind of feeling this way. I knew that I knew that I wanted to have a massive uh, through hike like experience in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. I knew that I wanted this experience to be bigger and more difficult and more challenging than really anything else I had taken on before. Um, and, and I knew that it, I wanted it to be um, I wanted it to be something that would require myself to give fully. I, I, I wanted to truly have to be out there invested to the highest degree um, day after day, week after week, month after month uh, for multiple months in a row. I just felt like I, I, I wanted to take on something. Um, I wanted to take on something that big. And I went through a, a bunch of different scenarios in my mind, put together a bunch of different puzzle pieces, didn't know um, exactly what that project looked like. And um, you know, no, no matter how, what kind of puzzle I put together or what I came up with, um, it always came back to this, this, this one thing, this idea of uh, the single year grid, you know, not going out and hiking all 48 4,000 footers in every month over the course of multiple years you know five or ten years but actually going out and, and, and starting um, you know in, in August um, and finishing the following July and, and hitting that mark um, every every single month and that was um, you know very much unlike what anybody had done previous there had only been one person who had completed the the grid in a single year um, or a calendar year at that point a woman by the name of uh, Susanna Johnston uh, very well known very accomplished, very talented uh, ultra marathon runner from, from Vermont, uh, living in Vermont. Um, but I wanted to do it in a little bit of a different way. I wanted to put my own mark on it. I wanted to complete the, uh, I wanted to complete the grid in a year, but I, I also wanted to do it in the lowest elapsed time. Um, so I couldn't just, you know, start leisurely and end leisurely. I had to play with the numbers. So uh, the goal was to start, you know, get fit all of 2018 on my hometown mountain, Mount Wachusett, uh, do a bunch of training there, get fit, and then wait until August and climb all 48 4,000 footers the last week of August. Because even though the goal was to hike all 48 every single month, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need um, all, all month to hike all 48. And so uh, the goal was to go out, hike all 48, 4,000 uh, 4, footers uh, the last week of August. And then on the back end of the project, go out and hike all 48, 4,000 footers uh, on the first week uh, or in the first week of, of July, that's the following year. And of course, in between, uh, hike all 48, 4,000 footers in, in the 10 middle months, right? September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Doesn't matter how fast or how slow you do it, you just gotta get it done before the first hits. Um, and eventually what you have is you have a complete grid, um, all 48, 4,000 footers um, every single month for 12 calendar months in an elapsed time. So elapsed time meaning from the moment you start that last week of August to the moment you finish that first week of July in an elapsed time of 319 days, 10 and a half months. And uh, there'd never really been anything like that uh, done 
prior in the White Mountain National Forest, just to uh, make sure that I was giving myself fully, just to make sure that I wasn't cutting any corners on that first month and that last month, right? So the only two times that you have any influence over how um, long or how short the project is, um, the only two months where it is really, really in your best interest to be hiking or running or backpacking these peaks um, as quickly and as efficiently as possible, I wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to make it um, as inefficient as possible. So I took on something called the White Mountain Diaratissima. Uh, the White Mountain Diaratissima is a through hike of the 48 4,000 footers. It's approximately 215 to 230 miles long. Uh, you're going to climb about uh, 80,000 feet of vertical. And again, you will start at either Mount Cabot and walk to Mount Musilak, connecting all the miles and all the 4,000 footers in between, or you will uh, do the reverse, start at Mount Musilak and hike all the way to uh, Mount Cabot, because again, I saw this as one of the uh, more difficult or most difficult ways uh, to hike the 4,000 footers. And so I didn't want to cut corners. I wanted to make sure that, you know, true to form, true to that original inspiration, I wanted to make sure that I was giving myself fully, not cutting corners, and that when I came out on the other end of this, if I did have the lowest elapsed time uh, on the grid, that it was... Um, it was well thought for, and I'm I'm, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that I did that. I'm glad that I that I um, you know in retrospect glad that I didn't cut any corners because from from the get go you know right from the training I knew that I had to take this project seriously and I knew that I had to give it my all. And so in 2018 I did spend that whole year getting fit. Uh, back home on that first mountain that I ever climbed, Mount Wachusett, um, I climbed that peak 300 times from January 1st 2018 to August 1st 2018. Uh, it was over 1,300 miles of training. Um, it was over 300,000 feet of climbing um, in terms of the training, and it got me just as fit, um, you know, just as ready for a challenge like this as, as I would have been if I was up in the, you know, in the White Mountains themselves training. And so, you know, when I actually stepped off onto the trail, that first round of the single year grid, that first uh, White Mountains, dis, uh, you know, diaratissima. Of course, it was um, it was difficult to process, you know, because I had the the through hike of the 48 right off the bat in that first round in August. But but then I also had you know this massive um, massive uh, you know year long project ahead of that. So it was like yes, I was nervous in the moment because I had to you know I had to hike 230 miles in a span of eight days. But at the same time, it felt a little silly to be nervous at all because as soon as that was over, then it was like you know the next. 11 months of, of unknowns and really, really difficult hiking. So, um, you know, starting this project, starting the first round um, of the single year grid and starting the first White Mountains Diaratissima, um, you know, I just kept my head cool and I tried not to overthink it. And I tried to just appreciate what I was doing out there, tried to appreciate the beauty, the beauty, tried to, um, you know, contextualize everything, understand that, you know, this was a massive project. I was trying to, you know, write a little bit of history here, but I was ultimately out there to just enjoy myself, you know, and, and, and give myself, like I said, fully to the mountains where I cut my teeth and, and the mountains where, you know, I really feel like I can, I can sort of, um, yeah. Yeah, be at home and uh, really kind of be like, like my, tr my truest self, so to speak. Um, that first round of the single year grid, that first White Mountains Diaratissima finished in eight days, uh, I believe eight hours. Um, so that was about 230 miles in eight days, eight hours. And I look at this finishing photo and I just laugh because, you know, I've got the eight days, the eight days with the fingers held up. I'm, I'm super happy, super stoked, but, um, I laugh now because I just see a little bit of, uh, blissful ignorance, so to speak. I had absolutely no idea, um, that the, the, the true nature of the single year grid was, was to be, um, the fact that it was always going to get more difficult before it got any easier. You know, I, th I thought I was uh, doing real well uh, by hiking those first 48 and eight days, but I had no idea that the project was going to consistently uh, get more difficult um, before it got any easier. And, um, you know, the, the reason for that, I think, is is quite obvious, right? The seasons start to change and and all of a sudden, you know, you go from idyllic late, late summer, uh, you know, early fall conditions to, um, you know, really in the high country full on winter very, very quickly. And so many people ask me, you know, what, how much, how much snow, snow fell, you know, the winter you were working on the single year grid, you know, what was the snow like the year that you were working on the single year grid? And um, I, again, I just laugh because it's really hard to explain. I mean, we were getting snowstorms that were not measured in inches. They were measured in feet and these storms were coming in um, usually anywhere from two 
two to three weeks apart. So it was like just enough time for all the trails to get totally packed out again, just enough time for you to really kind of gauge how long it was going to take you, you know, take you to go out and actually, um, you know, execute these hikes. And then all of a sudden another foot, another two feet would, would get piled on and it was just overwhelming and it was difficult and it, and it, and it, and it messed with your pace and it messed with, you know, your energy levels and how long you were out there. And I was, you know, working full time at, at, at the Notch Hostel um, for periods of this project. So I had other responsibilities, other things that I had to be accountable for. It was really, really, really difficult. And uh, probably one of the most difficult parts was getting across the presidential range. As soon as a new month started, whether it was in the summer or the winter, um, my sites went to the presidential range. A new month, as soon as like, you know, a weather window opened up and, and my free time opened up, I would immediately go to the presidential range. It was priority number one for me um, because the last thing that I wanted to have to deal with, the last situation that I wanted to um, have to deal with was um, getting to the end of the month. The only peaks that I have left are the presidential range peaks and there's poor weather coming in and I have to make a decision about um, you know, do I want to go up into the prezies in really, really bad weather, whether that could potentially, you know, end my life. And that's not, that's not an exaggeration. You know, these mountains are happy to, to end your life any month of the year, but, um, you know, I don't want to be in a position where I have to decide bef between going into, you know, potentially life ending weather and, um, you know, giving, giving up on a project that I've been, you know, working on for the, the better part of, uh, the better part of a year. So it was a constant back and forth. It was a constant challenge check and balance, you know, um, with, uh, with as apathetic as the mountains can be to our presence. I mean, I, at a certain point, it, it did kind of, you know, perhaps foolishly feel like there was a little bit of a dance happening, um, happening between myself and, and the White Mountains. And of course, you know, as I, as I stated, the nature of the, of the single year grid was always to get, um, you know, more, more difficult before it got any easier. So easy, even as I kind of inched my way through these snowstorms through the winter months, as soon, you know, as the high country started to warm up a little bit, you know, what do you get? You get that crazy springtime, rot, rotten snowpack, you know, muddy, muddy kind of conditions. And a lot of the times, you know, these conditions can require just as much, if not more energy to get through um, than, than conditions in full-on snow. Because as you can see from this picture here, it's like, you know, this is going out to uh, Mount Isolation on the Rocky Branch Trail, very infamous for being wet. Um, you know, you're kind of going out and you're on your snowshoes, you're in choppy snow sliding all over the place, get to a huge break, you know, in the trail where it's just like water and you're not going to stop every time and take your snowshoes off. You're going to trudge through it, get back on the rocks, get back on the snow, twist your ankle all over the place. And literally, literally, it was weeks and weeks and weeks of this, um, you know, averaging anywhere from 50 to 100, 100 miles per week. And it was slow and it was tiring and it was arduous and it was, um, you know, it was some of the most difficult hiking that I've ever done. In fact, sometimes I'd I'd call home or like tell people about the experience that was going on out there and they'd kind of comment like, oh, you must be so happy that the, the winter's over and spring's here. And it's like, no, <laughs> like you don't get it. Like, you know, I would, I would tell them like, I don't know what I'm doing out here, but this doesn't feel like hiking. This feels like some other experience. Um, cause I know what hiking is and this, you know, this, this isn't it. This is a strange, difficult, grueling, multi-sport, uh, kind of thing happening. And it's just hard for people to understand that. Um, and so even like, you know, even as, as the snow kind of receded and, and the waters that were getting higher from the snow receding, uh, start from the snow receding started to kind of, uh, mellow out. And I, and I did actually turn the corner, um, um, into late spring and summer again, um, you know, constantly reminded that the nature of the single year grid was always to get more um, and more difficult before it got any, any, any easier. And the reason for that is because right up until the last month, I was facing these massive challenges. So going into July 2019, the very last month, um, I needed to do a White Mountains Diaratissima. I say needed because this is the commitment that I made to myself and the people that are following the project beforehand. And I'm not big on backing off on the commitments you make, especially if they're commitments to yourself. Um, 
um, what I am big on again is giving yourself fully um, to the people, the places, the mountains that you love, and also like you know you living directly you know from your heart um, in, in terms of you know in terms of reaching that that capacity to give. Um, so I wanted it to be challenging right up until the very end, and it was. I ended up finishing this uh, this second White Mountain Diaratissima um in six days 18 hours the first white mountain diaratissima was um the 10th overall known finish so i was the 10th person to to finish overall um to finish the route overall when i first finished the diaratissima in, in august 2018 and when i finished this uh the second white mountain diaratissima I became the first person to repeat the route. So uh, very, very cool. And, and of course, on top of it, I ended up, you know, finishing this the single year grid um, in the process. Um, I'm going to show you this photo really quick before we move into the last video. Um, this is a photo that I took again on that second White Mountain Diaratissima, the, the, the last round of the single year grid, July 2019. Uh, this is an image that I took of myself the day before I finished. I was going through a thunderstorm. I didn't realize I took this image. I found it a couple weeks later when I was actually putting together the presentation. Um, and I, I just, I was totally blown away because, you know, if you, if you take a good look at, at, at me, I mean, I was totally sleep deprived. I was on the back end of a 230 mile push over the course of less than a week. My cheeks, you know, were sunken in, I've got this wild glaze in my eyes. And when I saw this, when I saw this photo, all of a sudden, you know, in, in my, uh, in my phone, you know, in the weeks after the grid, I was just like, man, this is, this is that guy, you know, this is that guy that I had been searching for, for almost a year. This is that guy that, again, like I wanted to just just kind of have uh, give, give himself fully, you know, give give himself fully, li live directly from his from his heart, you know, come home feeling like he had really challenged himself every single day, push himself to, you know, the 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 full the full edge of what he was capable of. I realized in that moment, you know, not 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 in that moment, meaning when I took this photo, but um, you know, a couple weeks later when I actually saw it for the first time, I realized in that moment um, that you know I, I had gotten there, that I had actually like met that person, that I had, that I had achieved that level of you know whatever you want to call it, you know, consciousness, awareness, self awareness. Um, you know, it's just, it felt like I had achieved what I, what I had set out there to actually do. And, and that wasn't just to hike all 48, 4,000 footers in the white mountains every single month for 12 consecutive months. It was also to go very deep within myself and see what I was, was made of at the core. And so, yeah, the following day reaching Mount Musalak, uh, the last summit of the, the single year grid, um, summit number 576, and also, uh, coincidentally the very first summit, uh, that I, that I started the single year grid at. it was just crazy man I had um had about 10 friends up there who were uh you know regulars at the notch hostel who had supported me the whole time on the single year grid uh had friends had family had loved ones around at the base waiting for me and it was just a surreal moment man I mean I was rocked I was really kind of out of it but uh it was a surreal moment a moment that I'll that I'll that I'll never ever in my life forget because um it felt like both the end and and the beginning of of so many things for me and um you know what what I've kind of gained from the single year grid in the wake of that process project is, uh, you know, I could, I could do a whole other presentation on, on, on how my life has kind of shifted in, in a, in a beautiful and unexpected way after completing this project, but it was a, it was a killer moment. And, and also I feel like, you know, I can, I can say very, very humbly that, that it was a moment, uh, a moment very, very, very lightly etched in the annals of, um, of, of the history of the White Mountain National Forest. Uh, so really, really quick before I end here uh, with a little closing video, uh, quick stats just to uh, contextualize the, the, the project one last time. Single year grid start date um, was the 23rd of August, 2018. Finish, uh, finish date was the 7th of July, 2019. Elapsed days, 100, uh, 319 days. Um, hiking days, 185 days. So I was hiking 185 out of the 319 days. Over a million feet of vertical, the longest day was 66.1 days. That was the very first day of the last diuretissima. Uh, I averaged over 200 miles a month, averaged over 80,000 feet of vertical um, per month. And yeah, just a couple superlatives here that I'm really proud of. Uh, two White Mountain Diaratissimas, one in eight days, eight hours, one in six days, 17 hours, triple single season winter. So I climbed three individual rounds of the, uh, of the New Hampshire 48 in a single uh, calendar winter, winter season during the, uh, the single year grid that had only been done uh, once before prior and, and still only has three finishers to date. So super cool little superlative there. 14 uh, peak Pemi Traverse, which was 46 miles 
miles and Osceola to the Kerrigan, uh, Mount, to Mount Kerrigan, a uh, little link up there, 50 miles, uh, 12 presidential traverses, and then, you know, all, all the rest of the big boys. Very, very fortunate to be able to tick off, you know, some of these traverses that people, you know, kind of spend their whole year aiming for um, just to do once. I was lucky enough to be taking these off every month and just giving myself fully the um, the entire way. So I am going to uh, show a really quick final video here and then just have a closing comment or two. We're already 30 minutes in, apologize, uh, apologize for running over here, folks. But uh, yeah, I think this video is gonna be very cool. So hopefully you'll stick around. I think the most important thing for me at the end of any big experience in the mountains is to walk away with a deeper respect for the land, of course, but also this capacity to really look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, it doesn't matter what other people think. I know exactly who I am. At the end of the day, I think that we're all out here for the same reason, and that is our own reason. That each and every one of us will get to a point where we climb these mountains and we don't see the lists, we don't see the records, we'll climb these mountains and we'll look out and we'll see our entire lives. So I just want to thank you guys so much for, again, spending a little bit of time with me this evening. Uh, apologies uh, for going over uh, just a hair. Uh, the, uh, for anybody who's been following along on um, any of my social media accounts uh, since the single year grade, you know what the, uh, the follow-up project was. Uh, hiking all 652 trails in the official White Mountains Guide in a single summer season. Uh, this is uh, an act called the Red Line. I was able to complete the Red Line, all 652 trails, 1,950 miles, and 545,000 feet of vertical in 99 days in 2020. Uh, starting on June 21st and ending on September 28th. So just over six days over a single season. Um, I will be stepping up to the plate, stepping up to the red line, uh, starting line one more time uh, this summer, summer of 2021. Uh, Going to go for a single season one more time and see if I can get the, uh, the elapsed time on the, on the red line under 93 days and actually get that into an official summer season. So if you guys are interested in following along and would like to see the White Mountains in a, in a way that I don't think there's going to be um, uh, sort of 
any, anyone else, you know, willing, willing to show you. Um, yeah, if you're, if you're looking to get a, a really unique look at, at what this national forest looks like outside of all the, all the primary and well-known trail networks, follow me on uh, the social media networks, uh, Finding Philip on Instagram, Finding Philip on Facebook. Uh, you can also jump on to findingphilip.com. Um, reach out, say hello. Uh, again, thank you, LL Bean, for the opportunity. And hopefully we see you guys on the trail summer 2021. Thank you. Take care.